Brent, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to uh, me today about really the business of music. That's what this is going to be focusing on. And, uh, you know, if we could just kind of start with some really simple questions, kind of get an idea of what it's like to be a professional session guitar player. Uh, specifically, let's start with what does an average work day look for look look like for you? Uh, you wake up in the morning. Obviously, you don't clock That's in the first like a normal thing I do. person, You're right? Right. I wake up, <laughs> <laughs> look at the and, and just procrastinate as much as I can before sure. I have to hit the traffic out there. Sure. Uh, well, we st- sessions start at ten a.m. So I'm about okay. you know they're usually downtown. They're all over, so I'm on the north side. So, you know, I may drive an hour away or 30 minutes, 20 minutes, depending. So I kind of just, you know, wake up, take a shower, drink a lot of coffee <laughs> and, uh, you know, try to get there in plenty of time to get, you know, get my sound and everything. But we usually, you know, start on the money at 10 a.m. So that, mm-hmm. that's when it all kind of starts. So so when you say um, that, that you're down there at 10 a.m., <clears throat> yeah. Uh, does Nashville sort of work on on block booking segments? So you have one that starts at 10 a.m. and then you have an after lunch one and then an evening one. How does yeah, that right. work? Yeah, you start at 10 a.m., do three hours, mm-hmm. and then take a break at one. That's okay. lunchtime. Goes to 2 p.m. Uh, come back, start at 2 p.m. Sure. You know, do another three hour increment session, and that's two two uh, two sessions a day. That's like a 10 and two. Usually don't go much longer than that. Sometimes okay. we'll do a, th- a long day, three sessions, you know. Okay. So that would start at uh, six and end at nine. Oh, wow. You know, sometimes we just play through. Mm-hmm. Just we like, yeah, let's don't break for dinner. Uh, we're fine. You know, we only got three songs left. Whatever's <laughs> left, you know, we just right. kind of figure out, you guys want right. to break or... So, okay. you know, usually get on about 9 p.m. Or or uh, if we worked at five, we drive. We have to hit all that. This this terrible traffic here okay so uh, <laughs> when you quit at five that's when all the traffic starts you sure. know that right right so uh is this when you do a, a session normal work day mm-hmm. are we talking monday through friday yeah or is it just yeah, any day of the yeah week? i mean it's not every day anymore right okay. uh, way back in the 90s i used to do every day really it was about three a day oh wow it was it was too many it was good back then right you know we were younger and i was like now I just I just shudder to think about it. <laughs> right, <laughs> it makes me tired thinking about it. <laughs> so when a lot you get... of a lot of driving through McDonald's, you know, on the right. way to a session or something, you know, yeah, I don't, uh, fast foods, not good. <laughs> so when you get uh, booked for a uh, a recording project, how does that process work? Does someone just call you on the phone and say, "Hey, can you be at this studio at this time?" Or is there something more formal? That they some sort of process that they go well, through. Well, the, the, the producer assistant or somebody, whoever's in charge of calling everybody, will call me, leave a message, or you know, now it's texts. Right. It could be a text from a leader of the session. Well, if I'm setting up a session, I'll call, say, hey, could you call all the guys? It's kind of what the band leader does, you know? Sure. Calls everybody, and uh, but we'll get the initial call from the you know produ- production company or whatever, and mm-hmm. just say. What are you doing, you know, May 3rd through the 6th? Are you available for any sessions? And they'll kind of, you know, have players in mind and they'll check everybody's schedule. And if it looks like everybody's good the 3rd through the 6th, they'll set it up. Okay. Now, you know, that's the the initial call. And then, then it may be like a scheduling thing, like four out, of, four out of the six musicians can't do it. So what are you looking like the last week in May, you know? Mm-hmm. So... So it's it's all based on a phone call or an email. Okay. You know, especially nowadays with, you know, iPhones sure. and everything like that. It's it could be a text or usually an email, a mass email. Okay. Now some group email. Sure. Someone at, at your I guess level in terms of the profession, uh, do you have a team of people who who work for you or are you a one man show when it comes to well to booking uh, and everything? Really the only thing I have is cartage company. Okay. You know, and that they'll I'll call as soon as I book the session, mm-hmm. I'll call them and give them the dates, and then okay. stuff shows up. Can you explain for maybe people who don't know what Cartage? Oh, uh, Car- yeah. Cartage is a, a d- delivers my music equipment, okay. amps, guitars. So I I might have like trunks full of guitars, you know, that'll be delivered, sure. uh, amps set up, and everything. 
and when I get there, they'll, to a certain degree, set everything up for me so I just walk in and, you know, I'll get out the guitars that I need out of the trunks, but they're all there. See, when I show up, everything will be there. Right. So do you make decisions ahead of time as to what gear mm -hmm. might you, you might bring to a, a session or yeah, you, is you it can, just everything? Well, usually it's just everything. Sink. I just okay. bring everything there and because uh, you never know. See, in right. Nashville, you never know what the... <laughs> we don't even know what the songs are going to be. Okay. Right? We don't know the songs. Unless you're the leader and you've written charts out ahead of time. Right. Right. You just got, you're just, you just show up and go, I wonder what this is going to be. <laughs> you know, sometimes, <laughs> you know, if it's an artist you're familiar with. Sure. It's Blake Shelton or something, you know, you kind of get an idea. But you, right. you don't know the songs, what, sure. what the songs are going to be. Okay. So you get the charts. Right. So that's why, you know, you just bring everything. You know, bring mm -hmm. a Gretsch, bring a Strat, yeah, baritone, Les Paul, you know, twelve string. Sure, yeah. You got to have it there because they may ask for it, so you got to right dig in your trunk for it. So you mentioned charts a little bit. Yeah. Um, when are you sent charts ahead of time? Who makes these charts? Like, how do they yeah. come to be? Well, yeah, the leader will be designated. You know, like uh, let's say it's. Uh, um, Matt Rollins or something. Mm -hmm. He's a piano player. He, they call him, could you lead this session, Matt? And then we're going to call everybody. So the leader will have some MP3s of the demos or something sent to him. He'll chart them out. Okay. So he gets a head up, heads up on them. You know, but, but everybody does. No, okay. everybody, everybody <laughs> you know, and, and you know, you make these charts out and you don't really write out too much notations on them. They're just rhythm charts okay. and chord charts. Because they could be modified while you're there. Nobody's, nothing's set in stone, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, let's say a David Foster writes out charts or Quincy Jones that they've been studied in pre production. And the right. keys are all set. Mm -hmm. These are like the keys may change, the arrangement, they may knock out a chorus and they may decide it's too long. So, sure. So, we just write up basic number charts. Right, and that's what I was going to ask you yeah. about next. What do those charts look like? They're not sheet. No, they're they? ju they're just right. on notebook paper. Well, I guess what I'm asking is they're not uh, they're not notation. They're national numbers. Yeah, they're just yeah. numbers, chord charts. Right, right. You know, like if you're in G, uh, yeah, that'll be the one chord. Right. Yeah. Four chord C. Right. Five chord D. You know. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know it. Yeah. But. Uh, so it's, you know, it's the beauty of that. It, it can transpose, you know, the singer right. goes, oh, I, you know, I do that in B flat. I'm sorry, not, <laughs> a, a, not C, it's too high. Sure. So automatically so, the one is a B flat now, and, you know, so it auto, automatically transposes. So typically, uh, you, you mentioned the singer. Typically the singer is, is present during the session? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. If they care anything about their project, they're right. there. <laughs> So this isn't. Now, a, I've done a lot of uh, Willie Nelson records when he wasn't there. Okay. You know? and, yeah. And I had to go back in a lot of times to redo them because the key was wrong. Sure. So, sure. But most, yeah, most artists are there. Okay. You know because they. Yeah. They want to have, you know, say in, in what's going on. I mean it. Right. For sure. Could be going uh, the wrong way, and they go, "Wait a minute, stop! I don't, you know." Right. Right. Here's so, here's my idea. So it's all again. This is all kind of. Uh, spontaneous in a mm -hmm. way you know it's all impromptu in a way when you get there right we talk about the arrangements may not even be an intro yet mm -hmm. may leave a space for that on the chart sure so let me ask you this uh going back to what a what a normal work day looks like uh one thing that i didn't hear you mention was uh a practice routine or a warm-up routine or anything like that do you when you're sitting at home do you sit down and practice and or, or, I mean, you're playing all day already. Do you have a, a routine that you work through in order to, to keep your chops up? Well, if it is a slow week or something, then, yeah. you know, we all have slow weeks. Sure. Yeah, I'll just, I'll practice, just grab a guitar. It doesn't even need to be plugged in now. I mm -hmm. mean, I just grab it and start, you know, go. Yeah. Practice over my chops, you know. Right. Uh, I may play a jazz song or, you know. Just to kind of, and then right. play through the changes, you know. Sure. Just to keep my brain going, you know. Right. It wouldn't play anything like that when I show up at the session. You know, <laughs> it wouldn't be anything like that song. Right. Yeah. 
So do you have a, um, I know a lot of players have a set warm up routine when they get to the studio or when they get yeah. to the gig. R really do it's you... all about getting the sounds. Okay. You know, that's sure. what I'm more concerned about when I get there is, okay. uh, cause some engineers might have different microphones and it, my amplifiers might be set up in a different scenario, like a, a closet or something, you know, going, sure. Ooh, I'm in a closet, right? Big studio. I'm in a small closet padded closet you know <laughs> so you know it's, it's pretty much getting set up and, and making sure you got the sound that's gonna work for whatever's gonna happen you know today right they uh um the the chops wise i'm not worried about as much sure <laughs> right i wouldn't be if i were you be honest <laughs> yeah be honest cody there's there's not a lot of chops on on records you know? right you don't have to uh it's not, you know, if, if you play too much, they'll call you out on it. So sure, depending on sure. what it is, you know, some may say just smoke. Just go. If I'm coming right. in and it's like, you know, Brad Paisley wants to, you know, it's like a jam or something. Sure. Yeah. You better, right. you know, have your, <laughs> you know, your A game, A game ready. Right. You know, now if it's like something like Faith Hill or something, you're not going to go brrr on Faith Hill. Right. You never get invited you know? back. Uh, let me ask you this because you mentioned. All about sound. So that's the bottom line definitely, there definitely you mentioned the amp being in different spaces depending on the the studio that you're working in <clears throat> excuse me uh one thing that i'm curious about is obviously that's dictated somewhat by budget uh what mm -hmm. are the differences between that that you the differences as they affect you uh between working let's say a major label <clears throat> recording a uh, an independent label recording or let's just say someone who who has enough cash to to fund their own record it, are yeah. there differences for the way that you uh have to approach it this session well there's okay mostly it, let's just say it's a, a record with less of a budget like sure. custom session or independent you know recording these days is, is so advanced that you don't need a big lustrous uh, opulent ostentatious studio to right. you know to get a good sound now right uh but it may require uh like all this cartage stuff i was talking about mm -hmm. costs money to bring in all those amp guitars right. and amps and they go we don't have a budget for cartage so i may just bring a deluxe or a pedal board and sure and I won't be able to bring 30 guitars, right? So I'll right. say, I'm going to bring a baritone. <clears throat> First of all, I'll go, what is this stuff? They'll say, oh, it's traditional country. Okay, no problem. Right. Fender amp, Tell this. Me. Right. Maybe a Strat and a baritone. Right. Maybe a less, maybe a Les Paul or maybe a, a 335 if it's, if it's kind of Grady Martin kind of stuff, yeah. you know. Okay. And that should cover it, but... But that's a lot of stuff to tote, right? Right. <laughs> I'm like, you know, now that I'm getting older, I'm going, jeez, why do I have to, why do I bring all, all these this guitars in the SUV in somehow? Right. right. Uh, but the, uh, the the recording, there's a lot of these recordings done in like house studios now. I mean, right. or garage studios that that you know. But everybody usually has a pretty good sound. I remember recording back in the late 80s and 90s I used to be some terrible studios <laughs> <laughs> radio signals coming in through oh, one man. side you know yeah so you mentioned uh, uh, technology advancing a little bit to where sounds are are generally better than yeah. they used to be do you use any of these I guess the the, the cutting edge new stuff in terms of recording yeah uh, Oh, you're Mater talking about like amp like a modelers Kemper, and stuff. Yeah, do you use yeah, like amp modelers? Yeah. I don't use that stuff if okay. I can. Really? I, I mean, <laughs> unless I have to. Okay. But I, I, I you know, uh, and they use that, a lot, of, a lot of live performances are now just yeah. direct. Right. Silent uh, stage. Yeah. 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 Nobody wants any volume on stage mm -hmm. pumping at you. Right. I hate, I mean, I'm a, I'm a guy that has to have amps hit me from behind, you know, call yeah. me old fashioned, but... <laughs> Uh, they, they, and they do sound good. Those like fractals, Kemper, oh, yeah. Kempers, they sound really good. Yeah. But you're at the mercy of the guy, sure. uh, the engineer that's getting your sound. You got right. nothing until that guy turns you on, right? Sure, sure. <laughs> so uh, I, I, lo I think they're great. Yeah. And yeah. if you have your own little studio set up, you can nurture it and make right. it and make it right. And and you got that's the beauty of you don't have to find a place to put your amplifier, right? It's Definitely. Just, 
So that, that that's great. Yeah. But I don't. I just I, I'm just walking in with a camper and you're like a lunchbox. <laughs> hey guys, here's my sound. Right. So uh, you know, it's like I feel like you know, it's not like. Yeah. Hey, where's your stuff, man? Right. <laughs> they used to want to see big racks and amps. Yeah, and feel kind of naked. Marshals and, like and, you know, yeah. like, hey, boy, this guy's professional. <laughs> He's brought in all his stuff, man. So uh, let me ask you this, because you said that you like to feel the amp in the room. When you're tracking, do you prefer to be in the room with the amp or? Uh, no. No, I don't. Okay. They used to do that. Yeah. I remember guys like yeah. Reggie Young and used to record. And yeah. Like there was a studio called Music Mill. Mm -hmm. For Harold Shedd, they cut a lot of stuff back, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Big producer back then. Yeah. Alabama and a bunch, Definitely. bunch of acts. Amps, they had like a little ledge with carpet. Uh -huh. And the amps were right there. <laughs> and I was planning going, God, I don't, I, I can't do right. this. Right. We play a lot louder now than they used to. Okay. The, okay. The, the amps used to be about, about that. That's about as loud as it got. Now we're doing, we're, we're playing like, we're, we're like right. banging chords. <laughs> and if that thing was behind me, I wouldn't have my headphones up to, uh, yeah. loud enough to, you know, I would be hearing that amp, but I wouldn't be able to tell what the sound was on my headphones. For sure. So what they do now is they put uh, amps in another isolated room. Right. You run right. long cables or you have an amp head, mm -hmm. run a speaker cable out to a, some speakers and they're isolated two rooms away or at least in a ISO booth next close yeah. to you. Yeah. So what about, um, obviously without talking actual numbers or dollars or cents, um, one thing that I think a lot of people are curious about is uh, session players, a lot of times you guys are, are listed on the record. Um, how do royalties work? Do session players make union rate? Is it royalty based? Is it uh, both? Okay. Uh, a good legit session, we, we, you know, I mean, we want to run through the union, you know, right. because that goes into a pension. Mm -hmm. So if you have 30 years of uh, contributing to a pension, you know, and we're, we're looped in with a multi-pension like the uh, auto workers or whatever, it's all a multi-pension. So it's, sure. it's, it's there and, uh, you know, a, a contribution goes into that. So, okay. you know, when you get to be my age, <laughs> then it's, you know, you're going, wow, I'm so happy I, ha you know, I've, right. I have a pension. Right. Because, you know, when kind of like guys your age or whatever that are starting, you know, that are getting, sometimes they don't think about pension. No, oh, that's cool. Yeah, just give me cash. You okay. know, and, th and then when they get to be about 50, you know, and they're going, <laughs> wow, I, I got nothing in a pension. You know, I'm, right. I guess I'm going to be doing this till I'm 90, not, you know, which is, I play music anyway. Sure. Not like when I sure. retire, but I quit playing music. So it's, it's good to join that. A lot of guys, should I join? Man, it's 450 bucks. I said, yeah, join. You know, it doesn't yeah. mean, it doesn't like you can't do the gig if you're not the union. But, okay. you know, all those things, all those, op, uh, those benefits stem uh, off of being in the union, right? Yeah. So who would know what you played on? There's no documentation. There's nothing, you know, everything's... Uh, you know, the union has, has, you know, contracts and everything to find out. Even if you're not listed on the album, you're sure. in the union on a contract in there. They can pull it up. Say, did you play on Darius Rucker? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got the card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're on for the, you know, getting a piece of the money. Okay. The, the royalties. Um, so you can imagine, you know, and then of course there's, there's film and movie, uh, uh, Mm -hmm. residual uh, royalties that you make too every right. time that you know i've played on a bunch of movie tracks you know okay show track like the friends <laughs> i did the music you know yeah. like, you know stuff like friends so you know what the cool thing about that is it's it's uh syndicated right <laughs> it'll be making somebody <laughs> money after my butts in the ground you know it's, sure it goes sure. on like andy griffith who's you know they're still making money right like that that was you know 50 started 60, yeah it started yeah. in the 50s so yeah, it's uh, a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Let me ask you, uh, shifting gears a little bit to maybe your uh, uh, pet peeves when it comes to uh, a recording session. When, w again, without asking you to name any names, what would be yeah. an example of... Uh, right, right. Like, 
What's his? No. <laughs> you mean like? Oh, uh, go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. What What would be something that when you walk into a session, you, it, it it's something you don't want to see? Yeah, they're out of bagels. <laughs> I hate that. We walk in, there's nothing. They used to. He's, no he's spread. laughing. I'm serious. No spread. <laughs> I'm freaking serious over here. Yeah. But but that is we we used to see more we see less food set up for us now really yeah okay that's kind of ticks me off right so whoever's but arranging it's it's this. it's studios it, it's a sign of the times right <laughs> right there right. used to be uh, bagels and yeah. donuts and you know whatever breakfast sandwiches sure unless you go into Reba Studio then 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 they have all that stuff for us still yeah oh really but we used to get massages even really yeah they used to like set in chair massages and you know like. Yeah, I'll take one before our next session. <laughs> this this is how spoiled we were back in the nineties. They, that, that's they've what cut I was back ask on you, all that. So 90s, anyway, right? okay, you know, wow. So okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm pet, getting mad just thinking peeve, about it right now. Pet peeve is no massages anymore. No massages and no, no bagels. No catering. No catering. Okay. Yeah, catering used to be a big thing. Okay. Yeah, we we worked at Ocean Way and we had food catered every day, just the best. Wow. Um, yeah. So once in a while we still do. We still okay. do. It's not as much. Yeah. Now getting that out of the way sure what let, let's say uh what 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 might uh disappoint me more you know musically yeah. or yeah if if there is anything uh, I mean... no we used to, i mean lessons you know there 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 can be those way and it seems like it happened way back more when when the producers would be a little more uh arrogant and, and abusive you know verbally or or they were not not that it was to that extent like hey you son of a bitch don't you ever you know mm-hmm. They, mm-hmm. there might have been that more but you hear those stories way back in the old days right the, <laughs> but if somebody's days. going uh hey you got to get this man we only got 15 minutes you're you're, you're slowing me down you know mm-hmm. i don't hear that any I, when i was sure. starting i heard that and i wanted to kill him you know I, they had right. to hold me back from choking him <laughs> and i was trying to i, I thought like okay I don't want to ruin this artist's album because I'm pissed off at the producer that's sure, being an asshole. Sure. Right. So I don't uh, see that much anymore. Everybody's pretty, pretty yeah. nice, generally nice folks. Okay. <laughs> and that and that's a good thing. Right. Right. What do you think? Uh, they respect. That? I mean, there was a back then. It, well, now, I, what what what's caused the shift, and maybe is it just a new generation of of people running the the show now? Yeah, I, I just think that this maybe recording's not as laborious as it used to be. I mean, if something didn't work, somebody just, you know, or they brought their home problems into the studio. I've, right. I've been in, I'm, like you said, I'm not going to mention any names, <laughs> but I've been in there and going, uh, there's this thing where we could run an amp, like a microphone and an amp, and run <laughs> direct at the same time. And uh, yeah. it couldn't, the engineer couldn't get the directs working. Wasn't my fault. Sure, sure. This is way back, and... Uh, I go, ah, uh, yeah, it sounds good in, in, to me anyway. And then I heard this rah, 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 on my headphones on the floor. I go, what is that? <laughs> rah, 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 rah. And I put the headphones on. Get those direction. Get them in. I'm going, hey, whoa, 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 man. They're not working. You know, yeah, and then I yeah. was like, okay, now I could leave this session or right. say say something funny and, you know, and, and lighten attention. things up, yeah. which I did. Mm-hmm. And then there was some laughter and it goes, it went away. Right. So, okay. You know, there's times I don't see that much anymore. Yeah. You know, really. I, I think everybody respects the process. Maybe it's just this the generational thing that, that, you know, they respect musicians more. But way back in the old days, there used to be, I mean, I was told stories way back in the country and Western days, that, mm-hmm. you know, like Jerry Lee Lewis cutting, you know, guns being sh- right. shot into the ceiling <laughs> and. <laughs> right. right, right. Everybody brought guns. It was like, it was like some of them were all deputized by local sheriffs anyway. <laughs> like it, it was it was pretty crazy, like the Wild Wild West or right, something. Right, right. But this was all before This is stories you... we always hear right. in the old days, like yeah, the 50s, yeah, yeah. You know, during Patsy Cline, you know, right, recordings. Right. And and I don't, we don't see that much anymore. And now it's just yeah. kind of like musicians are pretty generally. Uh, professional. Yeah, real professional yeah. And, and, and real efficient too. Mm-hmm. They go, you want me to stay and put a little harmony on that? You know? Yeah, would you? Yeah, I got a half hour, you know. And then usually go, well, no, we're going to pay you for that. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what you want to hear. So it, okay. and just generally, it's it's a lot of that stuff is eased up. Mm-hmm. 
So that might be a pet peeve if I, you know, back then, sure. when, I, when I'd go in and somebody was just giving me a hard time about something because they, yeah. they had a flat tire on the way in and they brought their problems in, you Into know. The, yeah. So. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, and actually, um, <clears throat> kind of going to, I guess, what the, if, if you had to create a pie chart maybe of where your time is spent musically now as a professional uh one thing that i've noticed and it's actually how you and i met was that it seems like you're doing more live appearances yeah now yeah uh i am what's caused the shift in that well i just uh you know i've been i've been recording on people's records for over 30 years you know Mm -hmm. and and just like uh well, and it's and just in general, things have slowed down. Studio musicians aren't what they used to be. Mm-hmm. We're we're still we do more of it in Nashville than than most. Sure, because there's still a lot of the human element in, in making music, you know, mm-hmm. instead of just programming stuff and one producer in a cubbyhole making all the music. Right, it happens a little bit here now. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's just less sessions, mm-hmm. uh, and and it's a you know younger generations coming in. You know, sure. your age, guys mm-hmm. are, you know, they want to take the seat where evolution, you know, circle of life. <laughs> it's, 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 you know, it's it like it's going to stop after I'm done, sure. right? Yeah. And, and I'm still doing a, a bit of stuff. I'm not doing near as much as I did before. Okay. But there's just, I have more peripheral things I could do now. And it's, yeah. I kind of like it because I don't think I could hit the, uh, you know, day after day, getting up at you know starting session at 10 and coming home at 10 Mm -hmm. i can't do it anymore i just don't need to yeah yeah for sure uh just got a lot of peripheral things come you know going on but Mm -hmm. um somebody somebody made it it was steve henson a steel player guitar player said uh somebody asked him he said uh are you busy though these days you know and he's he goes you mean the new busy or the old busy (laughs) so (laughs) It's not. It's not as much as going on as as right. far as going in, you know, with the human element and cutting every day. We used to. I sure. used to book stuff. I used to have solid week for most of the year already. By now, mm-hmm. uh, if the year before, well, it's not, not, not much year left now. Yeah, sure, sure. I'm saying around like July or something. I can. Mm-hmm. I can say, hey, I don't need to book anything. I'm good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's just uh, and and you know something. It's it's fun to get to play. You know, there's a lot of stuff I play now. Mm-hmm. When I go out live in clinics and we're doing something yeah. that I don't get to play in studios, it keeps my chops up. Right. Otherwise, I feel kind of rusty. You know. Sure. You get to play kind of your your own yeah. music a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, get too. to play that. And yeah. Before you're just kind of being a chameleon. You know, I mean, well, when you're a studio player, you're a chameleon. You play what right serves that artist or music that you're working mm-hmm. on to, that day. It's it's funny that you use that term because that was actually uh, I've heard you use the the you describe yourself as having to be a chameleon in other interviews, mm-hmm. and one of the things that I wanted to ask you about is uh, um, I heard Guthrie Trap actually talking about how his he feels like his role has changed a little bit uh, as a session player. He feels like he gets hired more now to put his sound on on records as opposed to being. Uh, having to sound like other people and and do you feel the same way or do you feel that you uh, get hired to play like to sound like Brent Mason or do you feel like you're you're going in and and doing 12 different things in other yeah, both, sessions both. okay but you do get you do get pigeonholed mm-hmm. you know so like when I started playing you know and started getting popular on sessions sure. I was doing like Ricky Skagg stuff Alan mm-hmm. Jackson so it was all traditional uh you know, Dwight Yoke and Pete Anderson, they were doing that stuff out West Coast. Yeah. I was doing stuff with Brooks and Dunn, Alan Jackson, you know. So the chicken picking mm-hmm. or the telly picking, there might be some that don't know me well that would have went, yeah, we got some stuff, but, you know, it's not chicken picking, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you get pigeonholed right. into that, right? you know. And then there's some, oh, yeah, I get Brent. He's just like a shapeshifter, you know. Right. You, you, and that was my thing. I would go in and play on a song, whether it was rock or pop or R and B. And when I left, you that it's, it, I would make them think that I that's what I played every night because it was the right thing I played. I might, you know, it was a sure. Uh, so there's an art to that. Mm-hmm. So and I like I like doing that. 
Okay. Rather than uh, it has to be something that's me, you know, they want to hire me for me. You won't get as called on as much stuff. Sure. You, you got to be uh, a good historian sometimes, you know, if they refer, right. hey, you want to, can you do this Angus Young kind of guitar solo on this? I go, yeah. Okay, I'll grab a, you know, SG and play. Right. Uh, or we want a Brian Setzer kind of thing, you know, so <laughs> grab a Gretsch. Right. I like that challenge because I feel okay. like, you know, um, and that to me, that's was, I'd say that was 80, 90%. And then, then a lot of the ones were call me when there was, you know, some kind of a hot chicken picking country traditional thing. A lot sure. of guys never knew how to play tradi traditional country. Mm hmm. When they, you know, they usually started out as rock players and they had to develop their country style here. Mm -hmm. um, and I was one of the guys that just, you know, I grew up around country music. My dad played it. I played country guitar, you know. Right. So I, I knew what to play in that stuff. Okay. So, you know. But I mean, I wasn't the only one. I'm, I mean, there was a lot of guys like uh, back then, like Reggie and Young, you know. Mm -hmm. I always look at him as a mentor because he was like, he would play something. You wouldn't know if that was Reggie or not. Was that Reggie? Wow. <laughs> Who would have known? Right. So there's stuff that I played on. You would never know it was me. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, so new guitar player moves to Nashville, wants to break into the scene. What's the advice that you give him in 2019-2020? Well, okay. Well, I mean, first of all, uh, when you move here, be sure you can stay here a good good while you know you're not you're not just gonna kind of drift into town and and mm -hmm. get a job uh you got to come to town with the idea of like you're probably gonna have to rough it for a while you know but my advice is to go out kind of be ubiquitous be at every as many places as you can to uh meet people uh, like if you're at, on Broadway or at Bluebird Cafe or something, a songwriter's thing, they may ask you to get up and play or jam, you know? That's the best way to get heard. Mm -hmm. And then somebody will be, wow, I heard you play, man. You are great. Could you come and do a gig? So, you know, you just got to get out, mingle. Uh, but <clears throat> the idea of just kind of blowing into town and start doing sessions is, is not realistic. So, right. I mean, you can go, you know, there, there's always an opportunity for that, but you've got to meet people there's a little clicks that go on here and they're not as big as new york or la everybody's in everybody's generally really nice and so if you have you you listen to the other folks here because all the best players come here you know you're the best in uh topeka kansas or something and right. you're the best player you come here and you go wow i'm not the best here right. <laughs> <laughs> but i want to be i'm close Sure. So, you know, and everyone goes, yeah, hang out, come up with us and play. So, you you know, you're in, in the in the big game, the Super Bowl now, you know. <laughs> so, you might have to, you know, camp out a while, uh, eat, eat a lot of ramen noodles or something. <laughs> I don't know. Right. But, right. you know, if you're really, you know, you get a sense that I, I can make it here and you've got, per, you know, you're destined, or you per, persevere mm -hmm. and you've got the uh, the passion to do it. You know, you just got to hang a while and and uh, just kind of. Also, you kind of feel, see how things go here, how right. people, what the clicks like. You know, right. uh, a lot of gigs available. Yeah, some of them, you know, most of them probably don't pay. What you know <laughs> enough to. You know, you got to like I said, you just got to rough it a bit. Yeah, hang in there, meet people, and you know, as you meet people and you play mm -hmm. great and, and you have a lot of talent, you figure you you know you your talent is. Uh, <laughs> You feel like, hey, I, I can make it here. I got talent, and I just I can hang in there with the best of them, you know. Okay, it'll, it'll probably be good, you know, yeah. good for you to do. I mean, or you may go home, and go. That's not for me. After right. a year of it, yeah. Well, Brent, I appreciate you agreeing to. Well, first of all, I appreciate you having me over. I appreciate you agreeing to do this interview and talking to me a little bit. Um, yeah. And uh, good to have you. yeah, I look forward to doing this again. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. No, this is the last one you can do. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys are all welcome over here. It's Thank good you. to Yeah. So, you want to so, play one? Yeah, let's play one. Okay. Uh, let's do a little hot water.